Warning! What you are about to see is a review of the Koglioko pilot. Xana Awakens. Understand that Koglioko the review is my unbiased, unfiltered review of the show and is my opinion. Respect it. Also, I did not use any clips from the actual show in question in any of these reviews. So, don't get on me for that. Other than that, enjoy the show. Well, here we are, my friends. Today is a very special day. Well, at least for me, and at least for the Oakland fans, hopefully, because today is Lyoko Day. What is it exactly? Well, today marks the show's hypothetical, within its own universe, 10th year of existence. You see, through this show's morphology, today is the day in which it all began. <laughs> As such, I have picked today of all days to drop two videos on you. Two comprehensive reviews. This is the first on the pilot episode. Now, if you went back and watched my season one review, I mentioned that the first season of Kozlioko got a major grade downgrade because of the lack of the proper pilot being in the right spot. I also mentioned that I'd be getting to it later. That time has come. Later is now. Now, the pilot is treated as a separate hour-long special called Xana Awakens. However, the fact that the pilot was put in place as a season 3 episode, and even given so season 3 bumpers, leads me to believe, believe that Moonscope, knowing that they fucked up, put the pilot in Season 3 as padding. That's right. All this is is correcting a huge mistake on, on the creator's part. Finally, after getting the money together and the fans together to create the proper pilot to correct the mistake. Um, mind you, Mind you, this series takes in takes everything we've learned up to this point and throws it out the window. You almost have to do an RTP, Return to the Past, on your own Lyoko memory when watching this pilot. The pilot begins obviously, with the basis of the story synopsis being told to you by by Pussy, a.k.a. Jeremy Belcour, about why he found the abandoned factory, factory what he was going to originally use it for, and it also gives you the first the first time that Jeremy turned the computer on. The most ironic thing of this is before he does the moment with no fanfare, no foreshadowing, no flashback, no flash forwards into the danger he's about to get himself into. The line he says, and this is rather poignant, is I hope I don't regret this in a minute. 
Uh, yeah, you're going to be recording it, pussy, for about four years, maybe more, in a cloud of dust. This unequivocally sets the chain of events in motion. And, yes, we do get very quickly introduced, deuced, to Aelita, but Aelita doesn't have a name. Jeremy thinks for five seconds, and that's about as long as his train of thought can literally be, and comes up with the name Maya. Cute, but honestly, dude, stupid. Very stupid. The, ne the next day at school, things are going seemingly normal. Adela Rubia gets hooked up with Oric in his, in his dorm, and it's automatically apparent from the first minute that or it can honor on screen that there'll be some protastic arguments. But also, surprisingly enough, Rod's hair is not yet made in the image of one Vegeta yet. His seemingly signature hair is it's almost down, down completely to his neck. And plus, the relationship between Orc and Sissy oddly seems more friendly than it is throughout the course of the series. Sissy is still bitch, but she's less bitch than, than you would honestly think about. Jeremy's just chilling at the vending machine, ordering up, guess what, the dreaded hot cocoa when he gets zapped. He is not shown at the time, but this is technically the first ever Xana attack. Rather weak. But it drives the point home that it's almost like Xana saying, Thank you, now die! Oric is... Oric is put in a position by Jim to be his kind of bodyguard for the time being overnight. It doesn't take too long for it doesn't take too long long for Xana to once again rear his ugly head and drop another attack on poor G this time using one of his robots to nearly kill him. After the after the save by work again, Jeremy de Jeremy decides to spill the bean, saying, "What harm can that do?" Since they go to the factory, factory work and the quote unquote Maya get acquainted. And Jeremy goes on this long-winded speech about the scanners. Jeremy has this long-winded speech thing become one of his signatures later in the series, but let's be honest, for memory's sake, let's forget that he does this more often than he should. Jeremy's looking for a virtual guinea pig to test whether the scanners work. 
for court this pissed off the finest room in ruins by Kiwi earlier, decides that Kiwi would be the perfect test subject for the scanners. When Orc tries, tries to capture the little dachshund, dachshund Odd is in hot pursuit to try to save his dog from from what he thinks is a rather evil fate. Saving his... Saving his dog... Dog Odd then becomes... Comes the first virtualized. And the reason for his notorious and now signature cat form is revealed because of a crot because he was thinking of saving his dog at the time. The next day though, Odd comes out looking like Vegeta with with his proper hair up in the proper space. Saying that he liked it so much on Lyoko, it kind of stuck to him. Okay, how do you determine in six hours that a hairstyle you got in a virtual world is somehow better than the hairstyle that you're currently running around in? But I digress. I digress. Jeremy, fi Jeremy finds out finds out about the tires and about the red activated ones. Assuming this will this while Maya get the Earth. He sets up the first true Glioka mission on accident. Sissy decides to tag along, and it almost looks like he's about to be a member of the group. And then she backs out. Warwick, after saving Odd from from first contact with Canker Lots the night before, ends up bringing bring yet another day border day border on on the task. You mean it's Yama. For some odd reason, the creators thought it'd be funny if they made the constant reference to the fact that she's Japanese by flubbing up the fact that everybody thinks she's a Chinese person. Plus, Mark ends up getting his ass kicked on more than one occasion, and when I say ass kicked, I mean literally kicked. Tags along being quite fond of on a first Lyoko mission in the ice sector, thus, thus running into Aelita. Jeremy and Jeremy and Sissy nearly get choked out by electrical wire wire and then it's at this point that the first ever tower deactivation is Bation is done, and Aelita finds out what her name is through the tower console. The return to the past program is first used when the 
friends of all find out find out to the sissy where they are, and thus the chain of events that leads in the Teddy Godzilla is finally expressed. Phew! That's the episode in a nutshell. The episode is divided into two parts using the Season 3 graphics engine, which is clearly showcased and does a great job at expressing all, all the needed principles, including including Jim, in expert detail. But this also tells a couple of things. Yumi and Oryx kind of crush on each, on each other. Each other and more. This is almost back-breaking, breakingly good of an introduction. It's so good of an introduction that if you watch it before you watch the proper pilot, it almost, well, I won't even say almost, it astronomically helps season one's overall grade. If the pilot was put in its proper place in the beginning, season one would have not been a seven. It would have e easily been an eight or borderline a nine. The fact, fact that Moonscope Friends 3 took all the way to season three to finally get, get the money and things together to give us this proper pilot is is astronomically amazing. If you watch anything of Leo go first, watch the pilot first. Before even watching the first season in tow, it will make everything make sense and it will give you a greater depth of, of where the series goes from here. Jeremy might be regretting what he did in a minute, but you will not regret watching the pilot. Go line 59. Live life by the code.